Guns of Bloke Geek Well guys, today's Crate Myrtle Day. We're going to have a bit of a 101 or a bit of a how I do Crate Myrtle. However you guys do Crate Myrtle could be different. This is what I've found about Crate Myrtle and what they like and what they don't like. And as you can see there's massive differences in Crate Myrtle. This one has a real red leaf. You can get the diamonds in the dark with a real black leaf. Or you've got this really green leafed one. Um, I find this red leaf one also gives you a really, really nice autumn colours. So. Anyway, so I'll just work on these trees and sort of talk about the crepe myrtle as I go. Maybe talk about some other random stuff. But basically I've had this crepe myrtle here for a fair few years now. And what I'll do is I'll just get in here and just cut it back a bit. Choosing two shoots from any one location. Super, super healthy growth this year. Um, generally, I opt for more upward growth. Um, you know, when you first begin bonsai, everything's about horizontal and downward growth. And as you're maturing your bonsai journey, you start to realise that it's crap looks crap and you start to do more and more things into upright um, and horizontal but you know choosing a lot of upright growth this really soft brand new shoots on this crepe myrtle really easy to cut got my new scissors I do have a bit of a shout out at the end of this video as well for um, growing clip for seniors from Tom. He sent me some more stuff. I think he sent it at the same time I got that beer mug, but I think it got seized by customs and just checked over because it had some micro riser and some, I don't know, inoculate type things. I'm not sure, but I can open that. I can show you guys that soon. Let's go through this crepe myrtle. Right, so 101 for crepe myrtle. One, super, super healthy, green, fast, or green, or whatever color they are. You could get doms and darts, like a burgundy. This is in between. Okay, so you can get green to burgundy um, growth. Wise, you can get super fast growing. You can get a little bit slower growing. Generally, even the dwarf ones, like this one here is a dwarf one. Even these are still really fast growing. Put out a lot of growth. I'll probably chop it back at least twice, maybe three times per year. Which gives me three to four lots of ramification per year. This one here has been a fair while in development, so it's got down to the fact that I'm just basically... Training for the outside ramification silhouette. That one there is more in the beginner, so I've got to get in there and really select things. Okay, what else? Flowers. Although Crepe Moon will have beautiful flowers, it's up to you, but I choose not to have any flowers in bonsai on my Crepe Moon. Because Crepe Moon will have these flowers which are well outside the normal silhouette of the tree they to get a flower you have to you have to let these shoots extend in sort of summer and when they extend on the end they get a flower so completely i don't know unrealistic for a bonsai to make it look like a tree but you will get nice flowers if you do that but i choose not to i'd rather enjoy the crepe myrtle for what it is have really nice foliage ramification and they have absolutely stunning beautiful bark pretty good root system and I'd rather just enjoy the tree for that and not worry about um, the flowers because the flowers just aren't in proportion to the rest of it. The dwarf varieties are better if you, do, if you are hell bent on keeping flowers for your bonsai as far as crepe myrtle, I definitely suggest that you get a dwarf variety. But having said that, it still looks pretty ridiculous with flowers on. 
and I've myself chosen not to worry about that because let's be honest the, the tree has so much else going for it with the nice vibrant flowers bark uh, flowers nice vibrant leaves nice bark bark growing just beautiful so I choose not to have flowers but that's up to you again um, more and more like I say I'm trying to go more upright in my selection if I've got more than two from a location just to make it more believable like a tree and less like a bent down bonsai you know um, wiring I wire the initial branches of a crepe myrtle they take to wiring just fine they don't die back or anything um, talking about die back if you do winter pruning when they're dormant. This is me personally. I've found you've got a good chance of dieback. Okay, so I would collect in the winter and chop it back to whatever you need in winter. But once you've got it in a pot and it's a year or so old in a pot, I've found every time I've cut it back in winter, I get a lot of diebacks. And I've also had the main trunk die back almost to the base of the plant before. Not this one, another one. And I ended up just sticking it in the ground as an ornamental tree or shrub in the garden because the whole top died off and it was no longer good for a bonsai. So yeah, don't cut back in winter. Not even light cuts. I don't even do light cuts. So. What I do is I tie my cutting back in autumn and mid, sort of mid autumn or maybe a month and a half, two months before your main dormancy in autumn or fall, whatever, wherever you are, so it could be fall. About yeah, six weeks before everything goes dormant, maybe eight depending on your growing climate. Do your last trimming then. Trim everything back hard. And what it will do then is it will push out just little buds everywhere, little shoots. Well, not buds, they will shoot out. It will leaf back out in those spots. But it will only leaf out, you know, that far. And then it will go dormant for winter. And as a result, you'll have a better winter silhouette of the whole tree if you display it. You're not going to have to cut back in winter because like I said, you get die back in winter if you cut these back in winter. Um, so that's a bonus. And then in spring, it'll reshoot and you'll be able to keep all that ramification from that very last trimming. You'll be able to keep all of that ramification. So this one was done like that. It was cut back in autumn, maybe six weeks before. And I also found by doing that, I'm not sure whether it's just this tree or not, but by doing that, this tree gives me the best red, really red autumn colors. Beautiful red. But that could be this cultivar. That one's greener and possibly might go into more of a yellow autumn color because this is more of a red leaf and red branching. It's probably more inclined for this one to go into the red autumn colors and it looks absolutely stunning, absolutely beautiful. And I just love my crack myrtles. And the bark on the things is absolutely beautiful. You get a smooth, really smooth bark, which you could almost polish up and absolutely beautiful and also talking about the bark if you leave moss on like i have on this one i'm going to clean it off but if you do don't be too stressed because the crepe myrtle is a bit like a eucalypt australian eucalypt in that it um, defoliates its trunk every you know few months during the growing season, it will defoliate 
and you end up with this motley bark where the old bark flakes off and you have some really smooth, beautiful wood underneath. So don't worry too much about moss growing up, but just clean it off when you want to. And you get this beautiful motley bark. Absolutely stunning. So yeah, that's about it. Don't cut back in winter. You know, you might have some success cutting back in the winter for the first time or two and then you'll have an unexplained massive dieback that you can't explain and I'm telling you it's from trimming in winter because I learnt the hard way I've had a lot of dieback on crab myrtles in the past and now that I've been doing this only summer pruning method I've ended up pretty well never getting dieback anymore you know I might get the odd twig dieback a bit but in general, pretty bloody good. Just finish trimming in. Just a few little random branches. So in general, pretty much I just had to shorten everything. Because most of them only grew two branches from a location. There's a few little dead bits of twig that did die off in winter anyway. Even though I did... Um, Cut it back in autumn. You still will get slighted, a slight amount of die back here and there, but very minimal compared to if you pruned it in winter. Even a light pruning in winter, you can get a lot of die back. So I suggest no pruning, but definitely no hard cuts. Another thing you might need to do in um, in this first summer or spring prune, spring I should say, although it is first uh, summer today, is you may have bits like this where you've got a bit of old dead wood and you can cut it back leaving only dead wood and it will still shoot out because we're in an active growing time and it can heal its wounds and reshoot out. They can predictably reshoot back out no matter where you cut them in the growing season. Do it in winter, like I say, nothing's predictable and you've got a good chance of it dying. Summer, you can cut back into old wood and it will predictably bud back. If I had a nice base, with a long straight trunk and I cut that trunk off with no leaves. As long as I do that in summer, you'll end up with a big forest of new buds come out and then you have plenty to choose from. So, yeah, yeah. so what I will do is I will clear off some of this moss. And at the end of the video, I might do a bit of a close up of how beautiful this bark really is. It is absolutely stunning. Like I say, more than makes up for the lack of flowers because you have to cut all the flower buds off as you keep pruning it. Because what would also happen, not only does the flowers look funny miles out from the tree, but what also happens is that the branch that you let grow, or the branches that you let grow, when you let them grow for the flowers, what you're going to get is you're going to get um, thickening of all those branches and then even in the canopies instead of having all this fine growth you'll lose a lot of this fine twiggy growth because you've had to let the branches grow out and fatten up then flower and then when you cut them back you've got all this really coarse growth on the outside whereas well, I think you'll agree this crepe myrtle has really nice fine growth all over at the moment and we can keep that as long as we don't worry about the flowers. So I'll keep peeling this off. There is a bit of a root system somewhere, but I'm not going to worry too much about where the root system is today. Just want to clean the trunk just a little bit. So we've got a bowl of water here. Like I say, these things exfoliate, so don't worry about wrecking any bark. Give it a 
it's good old scrabble. It's good old scrabble. Get all that moss off there. I'm not a mass. I'm not massively scared of moss, even on barking trees, um, because the added moisture and that seems to make things bark up a little bit anyway. Never really cared too much, but you can you can lose some bark if you let the moss grow on it too much. But I don't know. Most of the trees that I've got. Even if you lose a bit of bark, they soon grow a bit more bark down at soil level because it seems to be moist and, you know, just promotes, seems to promote bark down there anyway. But anyway, crack myrtle, doesn't matter, it gets quite motley. Just finish cleaning off the bottom. Good scrub. Um, alternately, if you've got some uh, fragile bark that you don't want to hurt, instead of scrubbing it like this, what you can use is vinegar. Put a bit of vinegar on a paintbrush and paint it, it will die. The moss will die. And as long as you don't go silly with it, it won't hurt the tree. And then, you know, keep reapplying that a few times and you'll soon get the moss off your trunk. Okay. Millipede, good old millipede. Not my favourite guys in the world, but, you know, gotta put up with them. Here's the question is, Give you guys a close up of that now or later. Oh, well, I've done the scrubber now. Maybe I'll give you guys a close up of the trunk now. And then we'll move on to the next one. So, regardless on the colour of these leaves, these ones are more of a reddish. Regardless of that, you'll still get that motley trunk even on where you got the green leaves. So, I'll give you guys a bit of a look. A bit of a look see. So you get that motley, beautiful motley bark. There is some good roots down in here, but I haven't exposed them. Um, this tree's probably in need of a repot next year, not this year. Because it is getting a little bit lacking of draining, as you can see by the water pulling up down there. Look at that bark. Gives you this stunning, stunning, beautiful bark. Absolutely gorgeous. And you can see the red sort of stems and the red leaves compared to this one with the green and the green stems. Both crepe myrtle. This one I'm pretty sure is a dwarf. You can see she's looking pretty good. Pretty cool. Pretty happy with that one. Fair few years in development that one. I would probably guess a good 10, maybe more. Once again, I did most of that work from way back. So sorry guys, apologise now. I know I'll get some comments, but... Sorry, <laughs> you guys were way back when I worked on that one. Right, let's go closer on this one. Yeah, let's start cutting away. So this one here is less developed, but getting there. So you'll see once I start getting in there, it's actually a nice tree in the middle of all this bush. Um, what else will I say about crepe myrtle? Alright, so same thing again, I'm just getting rid of the ones where there's three, cutting them back. But also, because this one's in development, I'm keeping an eye out for 
anywhere where I might need to fatten a branch. If I need to fatten a branch somewhere, I won't be cutting that off at all. Um, if there is any spots that still need to fatten up, so I'll keep an eye on that in the meantime. Um, oh, another thing I was going to say, crepe myrtle, you don't have to worry too much about the apical dominance that you do with a lot of your big deciduous trees. Because these deciduous trees or bushes are bushes, whoa, drop my scissors. Because these are bushes, they have a reasonably balanced um, distribution of energy between the top and the bottom branches. Even if they shade out a bit, it seems reasonably balanced. It's not like a, I well, can see down the bottom here, this is really fat and thick. And at the top's not bad too, so it's actually quite a balanced amount of energy. Another reason why these crepe myrtle are one of my favourite for sure. Give you all this beautiful balanced energy. Um, and it's not like an azalea where an azalea is actually stronger at the bottom. It's a bush as well, but an azalea is actually stronger at the bottom and weaker on top to the point that the top of the tree can actually die off. The crepe myrtle is actually super well balanced to the point where the top and the bottom and the sides are so well balanced that you don't have to really work very hard at all to balance your tree out. Whereas a deciduous tree, proper tree, you're constantly cutting the back, letting the bottom grow stronger and bigger, or you'll start to lose some of your bottom branches. Crepe myrtle. Gorgeous tree to work on. Super forgiving, as long as you cut it back in summer. Super forgiving, super quick growing. Responds really well to fertilizer. Fertilizing pretty hard in the, in the growing season. Um, also grows super good from cuttings. You can actually cut the branch off nearly as fat as your arm. And literally put a bit of rooting hormone on the bottom of it no roots and plonk it in some uh, you know perlite and cocoa peat or something like that where it's not going to rot keep it nice and moist and it will actually grow from that so super easy to propagate nice bark beautiful leaves depending on the variety you can get super cool autumn colors they're just a win-win tree. So if you don't have a crepe myrtle, go get one. Absolutely beautiful. And like I say, super vigorous, so you can develop a tree pretty quick. Like this tree that I'm working on now is getting there. You know, it's actually really starting to get there. And I've probably only worked on it for three years. This one's three years from being dug out the ground with almost no structure. Um, when you first dig them out of the ground, they give you a super, super crazy amount of growth, as most deciduous trees or shrubs do. And they quieten down a bit, but as long as you keep the fertilizer up, um, you know, they keep you on your toes. If you had every tree in your collection of crepe myrtle, you'd be flat out all summer. So it looks like the structure is pretty good. I haven't really had to leave any shoots to grow longer to fatten something up down the bottom. Because like I say, they have pretty even growers to the point where the bottom shoots seem to fatten up pretty well without having to try and promote them too much. Pretty cool. Super amount of growth. As you can tell, this is a non dwarf and the leaves are a lot bigger. So, alright, let's, let's just compare. I don't know if you guys can see that very well. So, this dwarf in my, um, the red one, in my finger and thumb, dwarf, and that there's full size, normal, standard one. 
both have very similar growing habits. Um, well, as far as care and the fact the flowers get out too far, fertilising the same, everything's the same. Um, it's just that you've got bigger leaves and um, the bigger varieties seem to have less colour in general. They seem to, but then again, there's so many cultivars that I'm sure you'll find one with good colour. But I do like this green anyway. This green is such a nice, vibrant, healthy looking green. Still just a beautiful thing to have. Like I say, crepe myrtle, one of my favorite. Um, I'll show you the trunk on this one as well. It's got absolutely beautiful bark. One downside to not being able to prune in autumn um, is that you never really get to prune the tree when it's fully naked so it's hard to see every little shoot or every little section where there's more than two coming out or three coming out from one spot it's hard to see that when the leaves are on I do think in summer they are strong enough that if you wanted to and I'm probably going to experiment with it in the future I think if you wanted to so you could really see the tree and wire it out if you want to wire it out I reckon you could defoliate the whole thing no worries and then you could really get into fine detail with the selection and the wiring um, so yeah I think I think you could really defoliate these fully and I don't think they would even blink super vigorous super healthy plants for bonsai um, and you can do them in whatever style you want if you want to do it in a traditional ladder tree Japanese style with a pad here pad here pad there pad there one at the back whatever you know side side back or right left back right left back right left back if you want to do it like that with a big gap for a bird to fly through that's fine but honestly I think that looks like crap and I think the more you do bonsai and certainly the people that have been doing bonsai longer seem to stray away from that sort of a style of left right back left right back and they start to just get like piggledy piggledy branching and more natural looking things more upright and I think Quite a few people seem to go that way once they've been doing bonsai for a while. So take, do yourself a favour, take a shortcut and don't go left, right, back. Just go what, with whatever you think looks good and whatever helps to fill in the outside silhouette of the tree. And also remember that when you're first starting the tree, don't go trimming the whole tree to the outside silhouette that you really want at the end because you could quite easily get a young stock okay you could quite easily get a young stock tree literally prone to the outside silhouette but then if you look in on the tree instead of having all this beautiful branching that we got here you would have um, straight little twigs going to the outside and then a nice canopy so make sure that when you're building the tree you cut it back really hard to start with and then you slowly build your branches out over years don't try and build it out to a tree finished tree right from the start you have to do it slowly and if you do that i can't see how you can go wrong with a crepe myrtle and although this has had probably one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, maybe nine or ten lots of ramification, that didn't take ten years. It's not like you just cut it once per year and that's ten years worth of ramification. This is three years because it's growing three times per year. So it's probably had ten lots of cuts starting from the very inside even back here was a cut right back in close so it's probably had 10 lots of cuts 
starting from the inside, growing a branch out really long, grow them out really long, cut them back hard, grow them out long again, cut them back hard again, grow them out long again, cut them back hard again, and then once you start to get more refined, like this one's starting to get now, you can let it grow out less each time before you prune it. And that's how you develop the tree. And like I say, that's all within nine or ten years. Ah. <laughs> nine or ten times within three years I've been able to cut back. So you get that quick ramification out of the crepe myrtle. And so far I've never been able to burn one with too much fertilizer. The more you put on, the faster they grow, the quicker you get a tree. So don't get slack on your fertilizer. I fertilize mine with anything really, Thrive, um, Seen Mungus, Power Feed, Charlie Carp, Fish Emulsion, whatever you can get your hands on and try and vary it a bit, Osmocote, whatever you want, whatever you can get your hands on and don't ever get lazy and not fertilise it because then you're, you're wasting growth on your tree. If you don't fertilise it, it'll be slower growing and it'll take longer to develop your tree. The more you fertilise trees in general, some trees don't like too much, but in general, especially with a crepe myrtle, the more you can get that fertiliser on, the quicker it's going to grow, the quicker you're going to get a finished tree. Like I say, the first initial branching, where you want the main branches, let them grow out really long to the thickness you want. When the base of the branch is at the thickness you want, or the base of the trunk is at the thickness that you want, then cut it back to a shorter stub, shorter stub like here. Okay, don't let it grow right out and then just trim the outside because that'll always look cracked. So it'll look cracked from the start and crack at the end. It'll never never really fatten up. You'll always have these twigs pointing out with foliage on the ends. So make sure when you develop the tree, develop it from the inside first. Grow it out long, cut it back hard. Grow it out long, cut it back hard. And that gives you the taper that makes trees look really good. So you can see the taper of this trunk from there, tapered, tapered, had a hard cut back here, tapered down there, tapered here, tapering out to the top. Same with the side branches, tapered out. And I think the front of the tree is actually here. And you can see they've all tapered out. Beautiful root structure. <coughs> and we're done. I think we're pretty well done. Okay, so let's go back here. Okay. Say our goodbyes. So that's it. Crack Murder 101. There's a lot of information, a lot of gathering on. I did repeat myself a lot, but that's hopefully so that it can sink in. But Probably two main points to take away from this, or three. Fertilise your crepe myrtles hard in summer. Always, when you're first developing a tree, let it grow out long, cut it back to a short stub. Once it's fat enough, once you think that, that um, branch is fat enough, then cut it back. And only cut it back in summer, never cut it back in winter. So that's pretty well the main three things I would say for crepe myrtle. Flowers is up to you. If you ask me to grow flowers out on the outside of the tree, well out, is going to wreck the ramification that you're developing in your trees. So these are two little beautiful trees, both, you know, quite small, short trees. This one's got a slightly better trunk. Um, and they're both very unique, beautiful trees. Absolutely love them. So crepe myrtle, guys, give it a go. Give the old crepe myrtle a go. Um, cheers, guys, for watching the channel. Cheers for all your support. 
uh, comments, everything. Really appreciate it. Love bringing content to you guys. Um, just a crazy, we've had a crazy spring this year, a lot of rain. Best start to spring ever. Trees are looking super healthy. Garden's looking healthy, everything's healthy. Spiders everywhere, I've got jumping spiders all over these two trees. Um, I could bring you in on a close up, but I don't want to scare some old lady and give her a heart attack, so I won't. But there, although mind you, they're the toughest birds around those old ladies, toughest birds you'll ever find. But anyway, there's a lot of spiders, which is good, because they're doing their pest control. Leave them on there, let them kill things. And that's about it. A few weevils. Get rid of a few weevils if you find them. No worries. Cheers, guys. Thanks for watching again. Really appreciate your support. And I'll see you in the next vid. Cheers. guys end of the video I just want to say about the fertilizer and the crepe myrtle just how much I put on I do it at full strength every 10 days uh, it works out pretty good anyway Tom from growing clip bonsai for seniors has done it again sent me all this stuff Here we go. Let's see what he's got I've already looked at it by the way <laughs> already had a bit of a look a bit of a look see but so all sorts of different stuff around the place here. Root pack, so Microwiser, Micro Rizal, Inoculant. It's pure, fresh, alive. It also has got some uh, other stuff, growth booster, another Micro Rizal, Polio booster, Another mycorrhiza, another pack, all from the extreme gardening by the looks. And another cool little thing you sent me, which I'm going to set up, is I'm going to put this little light. You sent me two of these little lights, and I'll just turn off the main light. Yeah, and I'm just going to put them in a bonsai at Christmas time on display. I'm going to put them in a bonsai and have a bonsai on display with the Christmas light. So cheers Tom for that. Pretty cool mate. Thanks very much. Little, you know, cool little stuff. There's the other light. And what else was there? There was something else. Uh, oh, here. So this was the other thing he sent me. I think he sent it with a beer mug, but it got held up by customs. Because they were probably worried about this stuff. Tea breweries and all that. Whoops. Okay. So I haven't really opened these. So these are little statues. Here's a cute little rabbit. I'll get them all out and then I'll show you. Rabbits. He said there's five all up, I reckon. Don't want to drop any. Statue. A uh, Japanese gazebo, and that's about it. So I'll bring them all up to you guys. So I should be able to display these on my bonsai as well. There we go. Cute little rabbits. Hello little boy. Hey mate, how you going? Whoa. Nearly killed you. In the gazebo. 
Japanese style. I don't know, a lighthouse or something, who knows? But pretty cool. Cheers, Tom. Thanks very much, mate. Appreciate it. Anyway, everyone have a good day, and I'll catch you next time.